couple of angle measurements off of the car I took these out of um, as far as forward and aft tilt and in and out tilt. And I found out what the approximate angles are that they work at. So if they're sitting up and down like this, they'll roll in and out, but as they lean, they lock. And if they lean too far the other way, they lock. And the same way with in and out, they'll lock. That's just so that if the nurse is throwing them around, they'll lock up on you. So, setting them pretty close to these angles right here should be all right. As long as I don't get them too far off, I should be able to uh, pull out the seat belt and latch it, I hope. So after much research and development, this is the location I've come up with for the seat belts. This bodywork, sort of, will cover it, something like that. I have to build a box around it once I get it all mounted. And the tire's at full compression, so the inner fender well will clear everything. I really can't stress enough how long it took to figure out where to mount these seat belts at to make them work. It took a little while to come up with this location. I mean, I kept trying to mess around and put it down here like it is in a factory car, and that just wasn't going to work. Too much stuff in the way. Ends up being a good spot for it. Got a nice solid bar here to mount to. And this bolt right here is going to be put on a boss that goes through the tube. Regular seat belt mounts for a roll cage. Got those on order. So far it does work. Let's see if it works when I get all the mounting brackets made for it. And the fun of building a box around it because this has got to be fairly well protected from the elements and it's right close to the tire. So what I'm thinking is a box all the way around it to close it in and a inner fender well, inner fender well, inner fender liner, probably going to be metal. So that will keep all the water and moisture away from it. Hopefully this thing will last a little while back here. This thing's not going to be run on wet days, rainy days, any more than it absolutely gets caught out in the rain or something like that. But we'll see how this works. So this bracket right here is going to have to be a little more substantial than a, just a piece of wood held in with a pair of ice grips. So I was thinking, you know, maybe we just wrap some duct tape around this piece of wood, hold it in there, and possibly put a little bit bigger screw through the... No, no. That's not what we're going to do. So center line of our bolt hole is going to be kind of on the upper edge of this tube. So we'll notch this short piece of tube or a short piece of tube like it. Just a little bit offset and set that there. And in the end of this, we'll weld a washer with a nut on the inside so that that captive nut can be used to screw a bolt into to hold that end of it. And that should be more than solid enough to hold the seat belt in place. Once you have your nuts centered up and properly secured, you can then put the support peg on them. And then after some careful alignment, which uh, takes only a matter of seconds, yeah, right, um, you uh, clamp it in place, put a couple tack welds on it, and you're ready to move on. A few little odds and ends to make the uh, clasp end of the seat belt bracket. This is a bracket for a rear shoulder harness out of a Celica. Just so happens that if you cut a few pieces off of them, they work to make seat belt brackets. for the front seats. However this goes in, wait a minute, that's the left side. That's the right side. And then this will attach to that. Click. Nice to to make those so that I can use them for the rail. All right, after a bit of cutting and shaping of metal parts, I have these temporarily clamped in place so I can tack weld them. The uh, seat belt is just barely going to clear this. I may cut these brackets off and turn them upside down. That will lower it, give me a little more room to put my tunnel over the top of that. 
but the seat belt will pivot forward as the seat goes forward. It clears everything. It'll lock in place. Um, once all that's welded together, that should provide a pretty solid mount. All right, I just tipped over the camera and the tripod. It hit the floor. I believe it broke the ring off of my wide angle lens, which was just an adapter anyway. So if I can get that to thread out, I'll be all right. Everything else seems to work. Ah, just drove the autofocus crazy, but that happened before. Um, the uh, automatic stabilization seems to be working. Woohoo! I'm a happy camper. That was a stupid move. All right, turns out didn't break the threads off, it just popped out of the threads. Luckily it didn't damage the lens either. You see what happened was, I had two legs of my tripod stand sitting on the lift. And when I started to raise the lift, I'd forgotten that I'd set them on there. By the time I saw it tipping, it was too late. Camera hit the floor. It survived. As far as I can tell, everything works on it. The only thing that I lost was the microphone plug cable for my remote mic, but these things are easy to replace. Cheap. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Yeehaw! Onto my cluttered workbench, I throw some more junk. And I got this to fix the broken wire on the camera. Now I can go back to using the microphone. Testing, testing. Is this thing on? Seems to be. All right, it works again. All right, parts have arrived. All I have to do now is make a hole to put them in. And as with everything else that I do, this will be done very scientifically. I'll move this up and down until this seems to line up with the seatbelt retractor down here. I'll decide about what angle looks right, and then I will drill a hole through there at that approximate angle, and of course, it'll be right the first time. Well, this kind of has to be right the first time. All right, all right, I'll be honest. Some measurements were taken to get the height of the pin right, so it went over my shoulder in the right place. But other than that, some calculations were kind of rough estimates. Precisely there. I don't know how you're supposed to do this, but this is how I did it to get my height right. I took a piece of paper, cut it just exactly the length so it just barely overlapped a tiny bit when I wrapped it around. Then I pulled it off, folded it in half, and all I did is rubbed it with my finger so it was dirty, but I put a little pen mark to help the camera see that. Then I wrapped it around here Got it about the right height on the end coming out because I want this to run at an angle through the tube. Wrapped it around here. Got the top edge of it the right height where that mark is in the center on the back. Put a little punch mark right there dead center on the other side of the tube. Ran my finger across this end real good so I'd get a little mark where that hole is. Took it over to the other side. Did exactly the same thing so I'd get the same angle by putting a punch mark right at the top edge on that side. I get an angle going through the tube. Let's hope that works. And you can tell by where the drill's at now that how much angle there is. That's where this hole is. That's where the hole on the other side is. So my seat belt mount will be like that. I hope. See how it works. I've covered a few things up to keep from getting metal shavings and everything, and let's hope for the best. For all you safety experts out there, I do know that drilling towards myself is kind of dangerous. You'll notice that my arms are fully extended and I'm not pulling towards myself. I'm just using my body weight to move the drill towards me. If the drill slips, I will fall backwards away from the drill. Thank you very much for your concern.
Of course, I will probably fall backwards, hit my head on the wall, and knock myself out. But, you know, at least I won't drill a hole in this place. Now this is where things could get incredibly ugly. Because I'm drilling at an angle with a hole saw. So I've got to take it easy, especially when it starts to break through so the unevenness doesn't oval out the hole or snap the hole saw off or any one of a number of good fun things. You can see it on the camera from that angle, but I can see the bit, the blade twisting to the side every time it actually bites in a little extra. Yep. That's what I thought it'd do. Well, you broke the teeth off the hole saw. You had to use the highest torque drill you had in the shop. So I usually use an air drill when I'm using hole saws because the harder you work an air drill, the cooler it gets, and I like to keep the bit speed low and it tends to burn up electric drills. I guess I should have gone with something with a little less torque so it would stall a little easier. Anyway, I'm going to see what this does, and then I'm going to go after another hole saw bit, I guess. Amazingly enough, that's cutting. See, when that catches, it stalls it because I can set the torque on it. Should have started with that. Would have been all right. Using a cordless drill because the torque limiter on it will allow it to slip and the blade will catch because of this uneven hole. When I did it on the other side, I used an air drill and when it caught, it broke the bit. Guess I should put that all the way together. See that catch? So I'll turn it up some more. It's working. Nope. I'm going to have to go to drill. I got the piece. Yay! Didn't fall in the hole. I've got it lined up with the back side of the hole, so let's see how this works. Cutting. Almost all the way. File it a little bit for clearance so that it'll actually Aim straight at the other hole. These are made to go straight through a pipe. I'm running it through at an angle, so I'm going to trim this a little bit 
this bottom edge of this flange so that this will go in deeper and it'll be probably a little under flush right here and then I'll just put a weld around it around the top that way it won't be sticking way out like this fitting in something like this All right, the first time with seats, floor, seat belts, everything, all in one handy, easy to use location. Oops, got a twist in it. How to do that? All right, there we go. All right, I think that works. Now we got to do the other side. That didn't take long at all. Well, this job's far from finished. Still got a lot of sheet metal work making the boxes and stuff around it. Got to finish weld everything along with the rest of the chassis. But for now, that's going to do it. All right, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.